Good morning. I'm Liz Loomis. I'm the deacon for today at First Parish Congregational Church here in Manchester by the Sea, Massachusetts. It's my pleasure and privilege to welcome you here to our spiritual community's weekly time of remembrance, reflection, and recommitment to God and God's ways as best expressed for us in the Christian spiritual tradition through the life of Jesus of Nazareth. First Parish Church Congregational, the congregational part of our name signifying our long-standing tradition within Christianity of democratic governance and the full equality of all members of the spiritual community to participate in its life and work, which means that I welcome you here this morning, whether you are here in person or watching from elsewhere, to this place where no matter who you are, or where you are on your life or faith journey, you are fully and completely welcome. This morning, I'd like to welcome Elsa Marshall as our worship leader. Elsa is a retired minister in the UCC. She served local churches, the Massachusetts Conference, and the UCC in various capacities. She's a national UCC education consultant, She's facilitating the Thursday 4 p.m. Zoom Bible study each week, so some of you recognize her. She's also consulting with the staff and congregation regarding FPCC's vision and ministry for its Christian Education Faith Formation Program in conjunction with our settled pastor search process during this transitional period. Elsa says she She's delighted to serve this congregation and is deeply grateful for your kind welcome and the interesting and challenging discussions shared each Thursday. Before I turn it over to her, Bethany has a few announcements. Good morning. This will be the second edition of the human version of our monthly church bell newsletter since we don't publish in the, in the summer. So I just want to remind us of some of the awesome things going on this summer, and then I'll give you a quick update on the Settled Pastor Search. So um, we've got our third annual art show, curated by our ever-creative Gene Westcott, beginning um, tomorrow, tomorrow night. Um, so please stop by. This has been a wonderful event these past three years. Stop by, check out the art, vote for who, you like the best and support Jean and, and our CE efforts. Um, our very own Simone Argento is part of the cast of Summer Stage's School of Rock production um, beginning later this week. So go Simone, you have our support, rock on. <laughs> um, plans are coming together very, very well for our um, uh, church fair that will be held in conjunction with the town's Festival by the Sea on Saturday, August 5th. Um, we've been having weekly play dates. The next one will be this Wednesday from two to four. And this, this uh, Wednesday, we'll be putting together the rummage table. Um, so we'll have cold lemonade, uh, snacks, and the fans going. So if anyone's around, come on by. Um, check your bulletin for further details about, um, about the fair and about Jean's art fair, um, art um, show. Um, we also, First Parish Church, four of our committees combined together, um, CE, Vitality, Music, and Outreach and Service to sponsor one of the concerts on Masco on Tuesday nights. So we get the best show of the year. Uh, we get the Beatles cover band, Forever Fab or Fab Forever, something. Um, and that is on Tuesday, August 15th. So um, be sure to come on by and We'll do something. We'll be doing something cool. Um, finally, uh, your search committee. Man, this committee has been so committed, not only with their time, but with their hearts and minds and souls. As I mentioned before, we're interviewing four candidates. We did the first interview by, via Zoom, and we've conducted three of the four second interviews. And just to share a little bit about what that means, these second interviews are actually two-day events. We, uh, there's a tour 
given for the candidate and their spouse if the spouse is available. Um, we showed them here and the church hall and the parsonage and tucks and all the cool spots of Manchester. And then we all have a casual dinner together to get to know people in a different setting. Um, and then the very next morning, crack of dawn, we're all at it with a formal second in-person interview where we take a deeper dive into learning about the candidate and sharing our goals for our church. And these, these meetings are, you know, an hour and a half, an hour and three quarters, kind of as long as it takes. And then everyone goes off to work or, or goes off on their day. Um, so it's just an extraordinary effort. And I know you all have them and this process in your prayers. Please continue, pray for wisdom, pray for a quiet heart to hear God's still small voice, and use your words. I've been hanging around with toddlers lately, so that's my, but use your words. When you see someone from the committee, you know, give them an attaboy, give them, give them a thank you, give them a hug. Um, they are working so deeply and hard for this congregation, and um, you know, God be with them and this process. We'll be having the fourth interview early in August, and we'll begin to deliberate at that point. And so, you know, please, God, just um, we've been so blessed. And just as a sidebar, um, we have our pulpits uh, filled with wonderful, kind people like Elsa straight through the end of November. We have not missed many Sundays that we weren't covered in what will be um, a year and a half. And I've learned recently about a couple of our local sister churches who haven't fared so well, facing similar challenges as we, you know, transitions and cultural changes to attendance in church. And, and I heard of one that voted to close a 300 plus year church. And you just can't help but think there but for the grace of God, you know, could have been us. But it hasn't been us, and instead it's been the opposite for us. And you just have to know that God has a plan. God, God's got something in mind for us. So thank you all for your faithfulness, your support, for showing up, and for believing in this future that we don't know what it is, but we know it's coming. So thank you all for your time. Thank you, Bethany. Let's turn it over to Elsa. Bethany tiptoed. Um, I don't have the strength in my feet to do that. So I am on a stool um, that I located down by the piano. Thank you, Herman. <laughs> This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please join me and ourselves as we call each other into worship. Um, our call to worship may be found in our bulletin, and um, though I had intended it, it would be every other line. It does not matter. It is just the way God wants it to be. So please join me and we will read it together. I will sing about the wonders of your love forever, O oh God. I will tell everyone I meet about your faithfulness to all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm, that your faithfulness is an enduring as the heavens above. Blessed are those who know you as their God, for they walk in the light of your presence. Come, let us worship and praise God.
Good morning. Before I begin, if anyone has art that they would like to hand me, I will be in the chapel hall beginning 5 o'clock today. So if you prefer not to put it in the bins and you want to hand it to me, 5 o'clock. So, okay. Oh, geez. Oh, sorry. Uh, better? Hello? You got it? Okay, good. Oh, good. Okay, good, good, good. This is Rosie, the pig. She has wings. Ooh, it's not very pretty. Hold on. There, better. I note that today's scripture is Matthew. But I really think that Acts 11, which describes Peter's vision of the animals, the unclean animals, supports our message today pretty well. You see... When pigs fly really is a very cool turn of phrase. It generally means something akin to, no way, can't happen, give me a break. But in Acts, when Peter sees what was considered unclean animals race across a screen from heaven, and a voice tells Peter to kill and eat, and he says, I can't, Lord, I can't. What pigs flying meant then is, are the rules and traditions more important than what God can do? Think about how religious observances have changed over time. Once only priests could read and interpret God's word. And then only Jewish men. And then only men. The rules and traditions of faith dictated everything. And if you were a rebel like Jesus, or apparently like Peter, folks looked at you funny and said things like, sure, Gentiles will hear God's word and be welcomed by God when pigs fly. But here we are. Worshiping God together, no matter what we look like, or how old we are, or what gender, or what race, or whether we're rich or we're poor, pigs have flown. Peter realized that God wanted to let him know that the gospel is for everyone. It wasn't just for those who followed the rules or behaved like everyone else around them did. Peter knew that the message of God's love and grace needed to be shared with everybody. He knew it wasn't about background or bloodline. It was just about who came near and wished to hear. Jesus said the same thing, essentially, when he told his disciples to love one another and that they needed to be recognized not by their words, but by their deeds. We need to demonstrate true care for one another. We don't have to approve of everything that people say and do, but we do need to value them, and we can. Not just we should, though. We are actually blessed to do so. Because, ladies and gentlemen, pigs have flown for everyone. So welcome to the kingdom. Thank you, Jean. I have a pig with wings in my kitchen. <laughs> this is the time that we, as a community of faith, offer our joys and concerns, our prayer intentions. Um, and so if we have some this morning, please share them with us. Betsy. If you can't tell by my face, I have a joy. George has his van. Let the camper renovation begin. <laughs> my daughter Sarah and her family and three boys under 11 are coming Wednesday from California 
So prayers for them to have a safe and uninterrupted journey. And prayers for Jerry and I for 10 days of three boys and my daughter and husband. <laughs> I have a joy, and um, I have a neighbor who has a serious cancer situation. And um, several months ago, she would be sleeping a lot. She wasn't eating well, and, um, and just a lot of down things. But Today, she is doing much better. She finishes the whole meal, and um, last Friday, she went to um, balance class with me and did at least 20 minutes, and it was just wonderful. She's ready to go on, Friday, on Monday, and um, so just thank God for prayers for her. Her name is Cindy. I'd like to ask for prayers, for support, for a, a lovely faraway niece of mine, Amanda, in Georgia. Uh, she's going in at the age of 43 for open heart surgery. As you can imagine, the whole family is impacted by concern for her and the outcome of this surgery. We're grateful that she's got good doctors and she's in good hands. And we'll be holding her in our prayers. And I love that company of your prayers, too. My, one of my dear, dear beloved friends from my college days, and we've kept good touch with each other all these years, as I'm in touch with his wife, Gerald Swim, was a wonderful Indiana boy that ended up in Kentucky and being quite a, a fellow with the, um, as dean of the School of Medicine there. Gerald had passed away this uh, 10 days ago, and we were celebrating his uh, memorial this past Wednesday. And I'd love for support for his wife, Bonnie. I have a good friend named Nancy uh, who had I had a good uh, I have a good friend, Nancy, who uh, a few years back had cancer on her brain and she recovered uh, thoroughly from it, completely. <clears throat> and then they spotted uh, something in her abdomen and she was to have excuse me, surgery uh, last Thursday. So for her pre-surgery, they did a scan and she has brain cancer. <clears throat> she has brain cancer again. <clears throat> I'd like prayers for Nancy, please. Please join your hearts with my heart in prayer. Dear loving and comforting God, we come to say thank you. Thank you for this amazing day. Thank you for work and play. Thank you for sun and birds, for trees and for water. Holy One, we thank you for all things. How wonderful it is, Lord, that you care about every aspect of our lives and you long to bring joy and happiness to our hearts and peace and comfort to our minds. May we always turn to you in all things, that we sit at your feet and receive the wisdom of your guidance, the strength of your love, and the joy of your presence. 
God, we pray for what may be going on in our own personal lives. Those moments, good and bad, those moments that bring joy, and those that bring discomfort. We pray for your presence. We pray this morning for our families and friends. May your grace and mercy be known to each parent, to every child, each grandparent, every member of this church family, each friend and every encourager. We pray for this community, that we would love each other with a holy love, a love that puts the care of our neighbors before ourselves and seeks to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. Almighty One, Jesus our Christ came to heal the sick and forgive our sinners. Hear our prayers for those who suffer in any way. Hear our prayers of joy. Hear the prayers of all those mentioned today and those on our prayer wall. Restore them according to your gracious will and strengthen them through your faithfulness and your love. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your grace and your compassion. Holy One who sustains and nurtures all life, open us today to your life-giving grace and transformative love. For our world, we pray that is crying out for relief, Lord, Make us instruments of your peace. Help us to be a beacon of hope and love in what can sometimes be a cold and fearful, dreary world. As we recognize the challenges and suffering in our community, inspire us to meet both the gifts and brokenness in our neighbors with acceptance and with hope. We know that you alone have the final say. And so we give ourselves over to you as instruments of hospitality and grace. That we would tend our neighbors even as we are tended, intended to be and who tends us but you. Equip us to share your light with those who may need a bit of help. And when we are empty, help us to turn to you the font of joy, love, peace, and all good things. Empower us to embrace with care and compassion your welcoming love and living water into our hearts. Creator of all things, you made a child a prophet and had him teach about your extravagant welcome and radical hospitality. Strengthen our faith to trust your promises made through the great prophets, biblical stories, and our Christ Savior Jesus, whose teaching calls us to love and service despite our fear, hesitation, or own troubles. In your presence, Holy One, is the fullness of joy with a peace that passes all understanding and a love that gives up one's life for a brother. In enacting this love and this life together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus modeled for us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I stand on the river of incredible appreciation. How could I not shout glory hallelujah? Thank you. Thank you. This is the time that the church offers each of us an opportunity to give back a small portion of what God has given and shared with us. This is the time that the offering we provide helps this church offer its mission and ministry unto each other and into the world. Praise be to God.
Please join me in this morning's prayer of dedication, which we will share in unison. May these gifts given to the ministries of grace be a blessing to friends and strangers, those like us and those not, those deserving and those not, for in this way the holy and welcoming love of God reaches all of God's beloved. Amen. This morning's scripture is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person, <coughs> excuse me, Whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of the disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Thank you, Liz. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, God, our rock and our redeemer. In this morning's gospel, we hear, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Four times Jesus says welcome in one sentence. And then he goes on to say, whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous, and whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The word welcome is repeated in that scripture over and over again. Our lives of faith and worship are filled with routine, comfortable, regular, occurring repetition. Scriptures often use doxological repetition. In Genesis, God creates, and it is good. There was evening and morning, and it is good. There was repetition in the last psalm of the Psalter, proclaiming, praise the Lord, 13 times, line after line, praise the Lord. Attending or watching weekly services is repetition. We hear the call to worship repeatedly. We say the Lord's Prayer repeatedly. We confess our sins repeatedly. Receive the Lord's Supper. Receive benedictions. Even our hymns have repetition in their melodic lines repeating verse to verse. Only the words change. 
The life of faith and worship is filled with repetition. The Holy Spirit, God, is ushered into our hearts and lives through these repeated acts, sounds, and words. The reps, even in physical training, the repetition fashions us and gives form to our spiritual lives. Repeated practices and rituals help us expand into becoming people who respond when God calls. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. On a youth ministry trip at my age too many years ago to share, we attended a small church on the coast of Maine, accessible by ferry only. The intention was to expose our young people to something different. We had gotten off the ferry and asked the Holy Spirit to lead us to church where we, the church we were meant to attend. We stopped, believe it or not, the kids stopped with us, and we prayed in a parking lot of a church near the ferry terminal. But somehow they discerned this wasn't our stopping point. They said no. So we left and we kept driving. Now that's not our tradition at all. It turns out that God answered our prayers for discernment as we worshiped in the church that morning where we were meant to be. That Sunday, we experienced a group of believers quite different than the average worshiper in our home church. We joined them for worship, and in the bulletin, it stated that following the service, they always offered prayer circles for anyone in need. With holy hospitality, the pastor invited us to join them for this very special ministry. Our youth were flattered to be included and excited to participate. For them, this was unique, new, a novel experience. We learned that there was a guy who had been in and out of this community is someone a bit on the fringes of all his communities. And he was one of their regulars there for prayer. It didn't take long for our youth to deduce from his words and actions that they knew they were there to minister to him. They gathered with him in a large circle and began to pray and bless him. At one point, they even were lifting him in his chair in the air. You know, crazy teenage crowd surfing style. I was worried. At the end of the prayer session, the pastor gathered with my mission trip community of high schoolers. He shared honestly that the church's prayer team felt like they were always missing the mark a bit with this man. And they felt like they weren't praying for what he really wanted. The pastor told these youth that he had never seen this man so calm, so relaxed, and almost happy. He thanked us. The church building emptied, and we all went our separate ways. The stole I wear today was a gift from those young people, and each signed the back of it for me before they gifted it to me so that I would always remember. And remember I do. As I reflect on that treasured memory, I realize that our youth were extravagantly welcomed into that church family. And they seemed to simply follow the spirit that morning, offering their own message of welcome and love for a weary soul. 
a cup of life-giving water. I know that experience transformed the entire work camp and mission trip. Our youth had been welcomed, and they in turn welcomed that man in the name of Christ, and because they did so, God was welcomed into each and every one of our lives. We had certainly received an amazing reward. In this morning's gospel, Jesus is preparing his disciples to be sent off as apprentices, a first step toward the assumption of leadership after his physical departure. As someone trained in the trade of carpentry, Jesus would have been particularly uh, familiar with the model of expert apprentice development. He had certainly identified those with potential to work with him and to grow into leadership. Jesus nurtured his relationship with them and interspersed teaching with demonstration. Now the time had come for the apprentices to use their newly acquired understanding and skills. And so he speaks to them about welcome. Christ's welcome isn't just a friendly handshake and a pleasant smile. Christ's welcome is salvation, reconciliation, and reception into the entire family of God. Christ's welcome of us is the basis and model for our ongoing welcome of one another and the changes that are going to be required of the church in our post-COVID world. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. And welcome me you have. As a Bible study facilitator here at First Parish Manchester, each week your members welcome me. They embrace me into their lives and their homes. It has been a joy and a ministry for me that has deeply touched me. I was a stranger, and I was welcomed both prophetically and righteously. I have witnessed your extravagant welcome in the last two weeks as families brought their children to you for baptism, a sacred act, a sacrament that welcomes one into the body of Christ and into the family of faith. This church family, I know, has gone through some rough roads and difficult times, and yet each week you welcome and embrace a new preacher. Soon you will be receiving and welcoming a new full-time pastor. And with that, you will be welcoming all the vision, innovation, and modifications that they might bring with them. I do admire how much this church has embraced so many changes. You are courageous faithfully adapting and pivoting during and post-COVID in response to all that has affected the entire church. The big C church, not just this one. Since the pandemic, more inclusive, broader, and bolder forms of faith and worship practices are being called into existence, requiring flexibility and adaptation to new ways while holding gently to some of the old ways that form us and inform us. It has been a tough time for you and for churches post-pandemic. Life has not returned to the normal we felt when we were filled with the comfortable and familiar repetition of people who return to worship each fall. Classrooms full of children, youth eager to go on retreats 
mission trips, and service projects. Our pews now have spaces that remind us of times that were different. Post-COVID is a strange land for the church. Christ is asking and calling us to come up from the depth of what was the devastation of despair and fear, depression, pain of the post-pandemic church, and offer prophetic places of welcome and holy righteousness to become a cup of life-giving water. We will discover the resisted, redemptive promises for our future through our welcoming and worshiping life together. The biblical narrative and worship is our redemption, the peak of our life to help each of us live it. Welcoming worship for all generations present amplifies God and reflects the eternal rehearsal of faithfulness as we encounter and counter all the pain of this world. In our scriptural past, we find our future. Being welcomed into worship should beckon us young and old alike to live into the times, even the difficult, uncertain, post-pandemic times. In this time, post-COVID, as part of the body of Christ, holy, welcoming worship will sustain us. It'll sustain us through uncertainty, loss, ambiguity, the known and the unknown, mental struggles, suffering, unemployment, the death of a loved one, and even crazy congregational meetings, whether online, hybrid in person, with or without Zoom, WebEx, Microsoft, likes or no likes on Facebook. In this luminal time, we must practice welcoming worship as the most important way to form and sustain all people of all ages. Worship's liturgical seasonal repetition delivers icons for each of us for our identity. Learning the language of shared ancestors through sacred story, parables, liturgical actions, and silence enables us to express and experience a deep connection and allegiance to this church family. Christ's sacrificial love welcomes all into God's family. And our welcome of one another means we live together as the family of God, as the body of Christ. So how does it look to belong to the body of Christ, being part of a church family? How does a family, a healthy family, interact with one another? That question guides our life together in Christian community. We love one another even through disagreement. We don't avoid or despise family members who have quirky personalities or annoying qualities or those who simply are different from us in the way they dress, talk, or look. Instead, we accept one another because we're part of God's family. We welcome one another by making coffee before worship or lemonade, sitting by a hospital bed, serving on a committee, praying faithfully, working through conflict, and in a thousand other ways. And we lovingly adapt to the changes within the family while, while accommodating 
each other's needs with care and compassion. We participate together in community and serve one another in the work that needs doing. Because that's what healthy families do. We find ways, both big and small, through word and through action, to say, you are family to me. So I will sacrifice and love you. I will serve you. The kind of welcome Christ calls for us is not the task of greeters ministry or a welcome team alone, but it is the task of the entire church each and every one of us. It is not an event, but an ongoing way of life. Christ welcomes us at baptism into the Christian family and throughout all of our lives into the body of Christ. Jesus teaches, whoever welcomes us welcomes Christ, and whoever welcomes Christ welcomes the one who sent Jesus, and by welcoming in Christ's name, we will be offered rewards as extravagant as those of a prophet and the righteousness of God. If we truly want to love God as Christians, we have to look at the man of Nazareth, whose life was wrapped in weakness, welcome, and generosity. Jesus opens for us the way to the heart of God. Loving one's church family requires time, sacrifice, and humility. The result of a Christian community faithfully living this way, however, is breathtaking. As a welcoming Christian family, you display God's glory to the world, and there can be no higher goal for a church. And the good news is that Jesus' is teaching is the same great news for enormous congregations, medium-sized ones, even little ones. It means you... Me, none of us need gorgeous buildings or state-of-the-art ministries or famous theologians or famous preachers as your pastors or programs galore for all ages. None of those things in order to welcome each other and the stranger in our midst. We usher in the kingdom of God by welcoming being a welcoming family to one another by welcoming everyone as Christ has welcomed us. Jesus was fabulous at holy hospitality. Radical hospitality and extravagant welcome are some of the great gifts Jesus the Christ has given us. Jesus called his disciples those who walked and talked and lived with him. And remember, they were often brash, troublesome, questioning, doubtful, and continually failing him. And now Jesus is calling us, my friends, to take up a mantle of prophecy, to discern the sign of these times, and to be an ever-present balm in this often troubled and broken world. As your website states, you are a place, and I'm quoting, that seeks to help others take the divine spark that God has placed in everyone, turning it into a flame that brings light and warmth to the world. As that truly welcoming community, your prophet's rewards and righteousness is living and displaying to the world the glory of God. May it be yours. May it be so. Please pray with me. 
God of all, set your Holy Spirit in us. Move us to seek Jesus' words and actions so that we might learn from him. Let us be like him. Let us be the welcoming Christ in the world as guided by Jesus and to love and serve as he did. Let us drink from him the living water and know ourselves as yours, beloved and able to love, spreading your great love throughout the world by welcoming one another and those who are strangers in our midst. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Amen. with the blood water. 
washed band. I'm going there to see my my savior. I'm going there. No more to roam. I'm only going. I'm going over Jordan. I'm only going, going over home. I'm only going, 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 going over home. I'm going, 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 going over home. Going over home, I'm only going, 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 going over Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Go, and welcome in Christ's love friends, family, and stranger. And when you do, you are welcoming them into God's holy love and grace, which is our righteous reward. In the name of the one who creates, and the one who redeems, and the one who sustains, go in love, go in peace. Amen. the blanket of the night for a startled sky for the heart
joy. 